trade and industry, Rebecca Miano, was scheduled to appear before the Senate committee to answer questions over the scam. The arrest of the KMTC MD Pamela Mutua forced Miano to appear alone before the Senate Committee on Trade. The CS who is new in the ministry could not authoritatively answer questions regarding the 16 billion edible oil scandal. The Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission ESCC has joined the probe and is said to be scrutinizing various documents related to the importation process. KTN has obtained a copy of a letter dated October 17, 2023 from ESCC to the managing director of KNTC in which the commission demanded to be furnished with 25 original documents required to facilitate the probe. In the letter signed on behalf of CEO Twalib Mbarak by the Director of Investigations Pascal Mweu, the Commission stated that it is investigating allegations of corruption and embezzlement of public funds at KNTC through irregular award of tender for supply and delivery of food commodities during the financial year 2022-2023 and 2023-2024. The letter lists the documents that the ESCC wants to access, including invoices, contracts, certificates, and names and details of the suppliers. The importation of edible oil by KNTC was approved by President William Ruto's first cabinet meeting in January 2023 as part of a duty-free importation of maize, rice, and edible oil to address the food shortage and high price caused by the prolonged drought in the country. Instead of importing the oil directly, KNTC is reported to have contracted 11 private farms to import the oil on its behalf and then sold the oil to other private firms who eventually sold it to the public at a higher price than the local produced oil. The National Treasury and the Kenya Revenue Authority KRA have been accused of applying the wrong provisions of the law to approve the duty-free importation resulting in loss of over 16 billion shillings in revenue. Some things like taxation and all that come from a different uh, perspective I and mean, in this element of uh, maybe Treasury and KRA sitting together and discussing uh, why there's need to increase those taxes. So I'm not involved in that. Uh, Azimio party leader Raila Odinga has since written to ESCC asking them to investigate alleged corruption in the deal. The opposition has claimed that the deal is a conduit for corruption and tax evasion and it undermines the local food production and security. ESCC CEO Twalib Mbarak has confirmed that the commission is looking into the matter. The managing director for KNTC is now expected to appear before the Senate Trade Committee on 30th of November 2023. Ode Francis, KT News, Nairobi. After the break, we head to Kakamega where hundreds have been left homeless after a demolition exercise. Stay tuned for the details. You stay soft, Adric Concentrate. One, it is four times more concentrated. Two, it is packed with four times more fragrance. Three, one bottle gives you 40 washes. You stay soft, Adric Concentrate. Also available in convenience sachets. Doom liquid electronic device, which is every corner giving your loved ones a peaceful sleep. Together, we can fight to end malaria. Martin Doom, Kenya's number one choice. This Black Friday week. Katika at 100% Kikweli offers at the 100 Naibuski local. Bamba discount kwetu. Kisumu dala dala. Vitu tunalipa na kadi. Shinda voucher zetu. Nairobi, Nairobi. Tunaipa mbakaro, Nairobi. Kamata mbuzi yetu. Fiesta, alo. He is your story, Zajaba.
description today. Watch the big match, catch up on the news, enjoy our new drama series Pink Ladies and the latest movies. Sing along to your favorite tunes to keep the good times rolling. See more, be more, do more. Star Times. Enjoy Digital Life. Culture Quest is a television series that takes you on a mesmerizing adventure of the diverse continent of Africa. From the ancient wonders of Egypt to the vibrant rhythms of West Africa and the untouched beauty of the Sahara, our team of passionate reporters delves deep into the heart of African cultures celebrating communities, unique traditions, rituals and customs. Witness breathtaking art forms that have stood the test of time from the intricate beadwork of the Maasai to the rhythmic beats of the Djembe. Experience the architectural wonders that tell stories of empires and kingdoms that shaped Africa's history. Don't miss the adventure of a lifetime. Tune in to Culture Quest every Sunday at 8.30 p.m. on KTN News as we uncover the hidden treasures that make this continent truly extraordinary. Culture Quest is your gateway to the heart and soul of the rich tapestry of Africa's culture and heritage. Subscription today. Watch the big match, catch up on the news, enjoy our new drama series Pink Ladies and the latest movies. Sing along to your favorite tunes to keep the good times rolling. See more, be more, do more. Star Times. Enjoy Digital Live. Welcome back. This is Kate. The death toll from the ongoing floods across the country has reached 100 and 120 recorded since October, with the Ministry of Interior saying 81,000 households have been displaced. And as Clement Masombo reports, Deputy President Rukati Keshagwa says many victims of flooding have been reckless. The number of people who have died as a result of floods in the country has risen to 120 after nine more bodies were retrieved in Mombasa, while four others were retrieved from Lake Victoria. This is from the latest reports announced by Interior PS Raymond Omolo in Nairobi. From October to date, 120 people have unfortunately died and their families have been duly informed. Nine bodies were retrieved from Mombasa, while four were retrieved from Lake Victoria. Omolo said that most affected counties are Tana River, Garissa, Wajir and Mandera, adding that nine more counties are on high alert. As of today, four counties have been identified as the worst hits, and this includes Tana River, Garissa, Wajir and Mandera counties. According to Pierre Somolo, at least 89,098 people have been displaced by floods since October and are being hosted in 112 camps in various parts of the country. A total of 89,000 households have been displaced and are being hosted in a record 112 camps established in the affected counties. <laughs> Elsewhere, Deputy President Rigavi Gashagwa has blamed Kenyans for what he termed as recklessness when handling floods. The DP said at least 37 people have died by drowning and warned Kenyans against moving to already flooded areas. Out of the 87 deaths that have occurred due to El Nino, 37 of them is by drowning, not 
floods getting you to your house by you going to where the floods are and daring nature Kenyans are crossing rivers when they can see the waters are menacing and they are rough Gashagwa also appealed to Kenyans to exercise caution whenever they approach flooded areas we want to appeal to the people of Kenya to take care of their lives and to know that they are families and the other people if they don't care about themselves they are people who care about them let us exercise responsibility let us not be adventurous let us not try to cross a river uh, that you can see that it is dangerous thousands of kenyans continue to feel the effects of pounding rains as the number of those affected keep rising daily homes have been swept away property and farms destroyed and in some areas transport has been paralyzed as a result of the floods clement masombo ktn news the national assembly education committee chaired by tinderet mp julius meli has questioned the quality of medical services offered to teachers by the service provider bliss healthcare limited that has been running the multi-billion shilling teachers medical cover since 2013. in a heated exchange MPs sought to know why Minet is not providing medical cover to teachers directly. The delayed approval to teachers for advanced treatment or to have treatment in other hospitals are some of the concerns raised, as our reporter Grace Nganga explains. Kenya. The members of parliament have compelled Minet Kenya Insurance Brokers Limited to account for billions of shillings the company signed with a teacher's employer to offer services to teachers across the country. The MPs accused the company of failing in its obligation to match the service with the money spent in the contract, exposing teachers to untold suffering. So what you are saying is just for the media, for the public to hear. But the actual things on the ground are very different. That's why the teachers are very dissatisfied. Okay. You can answer very well. It's not acceptable. It's not this. But it's acceptable. It is what is going on. It is not a chair for the CEO to continue misleading the committee when in his own presentation he never talked about quality assurance of the scheme. In a meeting with the National Assembly Education Committee, chaired by Tindaret Member of Parliament Julius Meli, AON Managing Director Sami Muthui was at pains to explain why the company should retain the three-year contract. You cited an example of promises made and not kept. I would like to say, for example, like copy, I'll, I'll get to that question because some members have raised it. It truly is not there anymore. We shall make P Point of order, Chair. Is the CEO admitting that because of sheer numbers, they are unable to give quality service? The 53 billion shillings is not for you. It is for you, the care of the Kenyan teacher. And the information that you'll, you'll bring before this committee some MPs wondered why the company is struggling to provide quality services to teachers, accusing the company of contributing to the challenges facing the education sector. This country is struggling with the teacher numbers. And with your delayed in giving medical service to teachers, you are actually costing us teachers to death. He has actually failed to provide service to the teacher. And secondly, Chair, from my own sources, I would want to know from police and MKL why they are not one and the same person. The Teacher Service Commission signed a contract with the AON Minute to manage the 53 billion shillings medical cover for over 350,000 teachers in all public schools. The contract was signed on December 1st, 2022, marking a major milestone in enhancing teachers' health cover. Under the new scheme, 51.4 billion shillings has been allocated to Bliss Healthcare Services, where teachers were to enjoy an inpatient cover of up to 13.6 million shillings. Other services under the cover include 2.07 billion shillings on maternity, while 1.3 billion shillings on dental and 2.2 million shillings on optical, while 179 million shillings is for evacuating services. The issue came two weeks after the TSC appeared before the committee to defend an additional 1.3 billion shilling supplementary budget to the service provider. Grace Nganga, KT News, Nairobi. 
Thank you, Grace. Opposition leader Raila Odinga will announce whether Azimio supports or rejects the National Dialogue Committee report tomorrow. Raila has convened an emergency parliamentary group meeting to discuss the report, two days after President William Ruto endorsed its recommendations. The Wednesday meeting comes amid rejection of the report by several Azimio affiliates who insist it doesn't address the high cost of living crisis in the country. KTN's political affairs reporter, David Modoka, with that story. Opposition leader Raila Odinga has convened an emergency Azimio parliamentary group meeting set for Wednesday morning. It is scheduled to be attended by all Azimio elected leaders to discuss the recently released National Dialogue report. Thereafter, Raila is expected to take a position on the report whose recommendations have since been endorsed by President William Bruto. The Wednesday deliberations could be heated with several parties in Azimio already divided on whether to support or oppose the National Dialogue Committee NADCO report. Among parties that have publicly rejected the report for failing to properly address the high cost of living issue include Mother Karua's NAC Kenya and Eugene Omalwa's DAPK. Former President Uhuru Kenyatta's Jubilee Party, the latest to depart from the report. We are in a crisis and I know uh, Raira will, uh, will lead us tomorrow in thinking through Azazmio. Azazmio, we are together on this issue. You may hear people saying, but we are together, that Kwamba, Yali ambayo yanawahusu wa Kenya haya kujadiriwa. The Jubilee Party Secretary General spoke at a time when his boss, former President Uhuru Kenyatta, has been accused of attempting to frustrate talks that bore the report. The thought that he would use his time to try and scuttle uh, the dialogue is really misplaced, is far-fetched, but in keeping with the character of KK of looking for scapegoats when they have no idea as to what to do. Keone further hit out at President Ruto's side for endorsing the report, despite doing little to lessen the cost of living burden. In short, and what I saw from NADOC, and I know we'll discuss more when we get uh, the leadership of Raira, I saw a team that is clueless, and a team that has no capacity at all to help us as a country. And that you can tell from the dismissive manner William talked about when he was in church. Nasijui kwa nini ya kitaka kuongea na matharao anakuja tu Mount Kenya. Kioni spoke after meeting a section of Jubilee Party members and members of the Nairobi business community at the new Jubilee Party headquarters in Nairobi. David Muthoka, KTN News. Staying with Azimio, lawyers from the coalition are seeking the removal of the Speaker of the National Assembly, Moses Rotangula, on grounds that he violated the Constitution when he declared Kenya Kwanza the majority party in the House. The lawyers further accused the Speaker for using the opposite numbers in the House to the opposition numbers in the House to pass the 2023 finance bill. The Kenya Kwanza legal team argued that such a case should be handled by political parties tribunal. The ruling on this case will be delivered on the 26th of January next year. This court is vested with the jurisdiction to hear. You are Speaker of the National Assembly. Which standing order, which provisions of the Constitution requires you to reopen an issue settled by the people and the party, the coalitions that you belong to as the founder member to declare it the majority. We are looking at the question of how and when is the majority and the minority in parliament determined? How, when, and who determines this? Those are not issues that can be brought under a tribunal such as the political party tribunal. It is not disputed that the nature and comportment of this complaint is a political disagreement. It is a political complaint arising from one section of parliament, the National Assembly, as the Mio coalition, which feels aggrieved by the decision of the right honorable speak of yourself to strike out the petition let the petitioners 
go back to the drawing board, be guided by rules of civility, and have distinct courses of action against those they perceive to have done a wrong. Kenya Roads Board presents a report on roads network due to the floods. Details after the break on our business news segment. We're on Happy Kenya Clean Toilet Mission. And you're visiting Mama Zawadi live in Nairobi. Come with me. Ah, Selena! Mama Zawadi, how do you keep your toilets clean? I use normal detergent and bleach for washing. The detergent and bleach clean less can leave behind yellowness, rust, and germs. Hapix 10 times better cleaning compared to regular detergents and bleach. And kills 99.9% .9 illness causing germs in your toilet, including the COVID-19 virus. Wow, Selena! You mean me, Sasa? Awesome. Really? Yes. Now that she's part of the mission, the next house is yours. Magic has hit your imagination of TV. A brand new veteran TV with Star Times Inside Technology. New TV innovation with an inbuilt decoder that connects you to both Star Times antenna and satellite signal. With Star Times Inside Veteran TV, you can enjoy over 200 local and international channels. One month Star Times highest bouquet for free. Automatic system update. More benefits, more affordable. Star Times Inside Veteran TV is available in all Star Times branches and dealers countrywide. Star Times Inside. Side. Entertainment in build. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Mortin Doom, with its trusted formulation, it provides protection in seconds. So spread the Mortin Doom message of how we, you and I, can fight to end malaria. Mortin Doom, Kenya's number one choice. So this is Organic Chen Gardens, as you can see. Uh, karibu sana. Mkifanya hivi na hivi mtaongeza mazao yenu katika shamba. Ametueleza vile ambavyo unakabiliana na wadudu shambani. So kwa hii stage haihitaji kuongeza chakula kingine. Vami worms describe for us what are they? Vami worms are, are a special type of worm. They are not native to to Kenya. Leo tunaangazia tunda la ndizi. Kukiwa na mbolea na maji vizuri inakuwa haraka. KTN Business News, brought to you by Standard Chartered Bank. Welcome back. The ongoing El Nino rains have put a strain on Kenya's road network. The Kenya Roads Board says it has disbursed funds to different road agencies to, be, to beef up repair works all around the country. Jasmine Murani with the details. 
The Kenya Roads Board has, in the recent past, been the subject of many conversations, and for good reason. The heavy downpour currently being experienced in the country has seen major highways deteriorate with certain regions being completely cut off. KRB Highways Director Paul Kibet says repair works are already underway. The road asset in the country is estimated to be over 3.5 trillion uh, uh, Kenyan shillings. And uh, so there is a need to preserve uh, that kind of investment. It is the hugest, uh, I think, investment uh, in the country. One of the criteria that we use that any road that is in good condition should be, should, should be taken on board into the maintenance uh, uh, program. The board collects 18 shillings per litre of petrol and diesel into the road maintenance levy fund, a substantial amount by all means. So how is the money collected and where is it spent? So one of the key mandates of the board is to coordinate the optimal, optimal utilization of the fund by implementing programs relating to maintenance, rehabilitation uh, and development funded by the fund. And then to, to seek optimal efficiency and cost effectiveness in roadworks implemented by the fund. Uh, thirdly, to manage the fund itself. KRB is mainly funded through the collection of road maintenance levy fund and transit tolls. The money is collected and then dispersed to different road agencies whose mandate is the maintenance of roads. The Kenya Roads Board disperses funds to different agencies in different percentages. The Kenya National Highways Authority, Kenha, gets the lion's share at 40%. The Kenya Rural Roads Authority, Kera, gets 32% of the total collection, while the Kenya Urban Roads Authority gets 15%. For the maintenance of park roads, KRB allocates 1% of the RMLF to the Kenya Wildlife Service. KRB, however, says that financial constraints continue to hamper its work due to the rising cost of road maintenance. We still have uh, a big gap in terms of uh, maintaining some of our roads because of the constraints in terms of resources. But we, we hope with, with time we shall be able to get additional resources so that we are able to maintain uh, our entire network. Jasmine Murani for KTN News. Mineral Transport Cabinet Secretary Kipchuba Murkomen has promised a speedy restoration of the roads and bridges damaged due to the ongoing heavy rains in the coastal and northeastern regions. The CS, who was inspecting the restoration of the Mbogolo Bridge in Kilifi County that was recently washed away by floods, and the construction of a new bridge along the same highway, which is 95% completed, said that due to the limited resources at the ministry's disposal, they are ready to work with development partners to deliver. The CS also inspected the dueling of the 40-kilometer Mtuapa Kilifi Road and the Mtuapa Nyali Bridge Road, which was launched by President William Ruto in November last year. Find you, even after you've crossed the dangerously flooded river, we will still carry out um, uh, punishment. Uh, in terms of cancellation of the licenses and you can also be charged for attempted suicide because uh, the 76 of the 76 people who have died a critical number of more than half would have outrightly been avoided had our drivers uh, not taken unnecessary risk to cross flooded rivers and i want to pass this message there is no hurry you better be late for a week even a month. The government should review and implement laws that will ensure that the country surpasses its current economic state to attract foreign investors. This was an observation made during the launch of the first ever Matatu wagon assembled in Kenya with zero mileage and environmental friendly after a, a partnership between Asian motor manufacturer King Long and KB Auto. In order to train them to take it, and as we progress further, this this kind of product it can be widely used. It can be used as a matatu transportation. It can be used as a suburban transportation. 
it can be used as a tourism bus, airport shuttle bus, and the Warsaw Sudaf bus. What we are trying to do is to bridge the gap and to provide affordable quality uh, products to the consumers where they get the full support of warranty, where they get the full support of competitively priced spare parts and most importantly get the feel to drive a brand new vehicle. Ahead in sports, Kenya's young stars register a second win in Kisumu. The goals and the highlights from the sports desk. From here, possibilities are everywhere. From taking first steps here, to beginning your own wealth journey here. From backing global trade ambitions here, to delivering on that promise here. That's why we're here, in the world's most dynamic markets. A bank that connects potential to possibilities. So, where will you go from here? We value your feedback and welcome any comments, queries or complaints regarding our news content. You can get in touch with us on SMS 22155, call 0719-012-450 or email feedback at standardmedia.co.ke or you can send us a letter on Post Office Box 30080-00100 or deliver it to our offices at Standard Group Centre, Mombasa Road, Nairobi. You know, encouraging our youth to be active in, uh, and innovative. And one of the ways of doing it is through sports. And sports is for the young people to come and, 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 and play together. And you know, today, sports is the biggest employer in the world. Katika to 100% Kikweli offers at the 100 Naibas Kiloko. Naibas Kikweli Fiesta. Naibas saves you money. He is your story Zajaba. Africa is a land of incredible diversity and rich cultural heritage. A continent full of stories waiting to be told. Join us as we journey to remote villages to explore the vibrant cultures of Africa. Discover the intricate artistry of its jewelry and textiles. The delicious flavors of its cuisine. The joyous celebrations that bring communities together. Learn about the customs and beliefs that have been passed down through generations. 
Experience the breathtaking natural beauty from the rolling savannas to the majestic mountains. Don't miss this incredible opportunity to explore the richness and diversity of Africa's culture and heritage. Tune in to our special broadcast, Culture Quest, and discover why Africa truly is a continent like no other. Subscription today. Watch the big match, catch up on the news, enjoy our new drama series Pink Ladies and the latest movies. Sing along to your favorite tunes to keep the good times rolling. See more, be more, do more. Star Times. Enjoy Digital Live. Okay, now let's do the sports. Aldrin Kibet was on the score sheet as Kenya managed to defeat Rwanda 1-0 in the Sakafa Under-18 match in Kisumu. This is Kenya's second win after their opening 5-0 win over Sudan and that means the hosts have enjoyed an unblemished run so far. Despite a late resurgence by the Rwandans, Kenya were able to hold on to their lead and take their tally to six points. Aldrin Kibet, Kibet. Kato wa kwanza, kato wa pili, anakata, kata, kata, didi enda shimie, didi enda shimie, leon kuro, wanengia Kenya sasa, anakulia vizore kabisa, Stanley Omondi, Stanley Omondi, Aldrin, Kibe! Hime bembelezo mtesa maji, hime kandwa kama umbo angano, hime tengenezo kutoka duba, very well played there by the lads. Day two of the Africa Deaf Olympics at the Mo International Sports Center Kasarani had a fair share of action with Team Kenya securing a pivotal victory in the men's and women's 100 meters. David Omira together with his sister Beryl Omira brought the victory home. Be here and winning this uh, race because I am experienced and I'm really happy. Uh, it is the first time that I'm winning 100 meters in African Championship. Like recently, uh, the other time in 2019, I did not participate in 100 meters, but now I'm very happy that um, I have won this. So I'm also hoping to break the record for 200 meters. <laughs> Serikali kini support ni tendelea kuenda na niende ni kuwe champion pia katika Japan. Uh, for the first time uh, in African Championship, I was there, but that time I was uh, um, I was to I had a problem with my knee, yeah. But I, I never gave up for that. I really did much, and uh, it was really paining. But uh, I really continue with the faith. The same faith in 20, uh, that time I, I, I won the marath marathon. In, uh, in second medal I had in the steeple years, I won uh, silver. But for now, <laughs> and I hope, and I'm going to change the position in the past and do better. Well done to our athletes there. Ian Duncan is eager to win the Safari Classic Rally running from the 9th to the 18th of December. Ian and his navigator, Jas Palmadaru, will take on 62 other drivers, covering over 4,000 kilometers across the rally route, marking the largest number of driver entries in the history of the classic rally. It's getting quite exciting. Don't know whether we're nervous, excited, or... But, um, yeah, it's getting very close. Time is flying by now. Um, I think next week we're off to the coast, and then... Um, so it's... So what was a few months ago is now... Away is now very close, so... Um, Okay, the weather I think is going to be a challenge, even even just to drive around on the tarmac roads. But I think um, I think they did quite a good job of fixing the main roads the other day when the main roads got washed away. So yeah, let, let's hope um, it dries up a little bit. I think some of it's going to be extremely muddy and very tricky, and then um, I think the roads are going to be pretty rough. You know, like it washes all the soil and puts new ditches and the rocks come out. So um, it's going to be hard, but yeah, it's it should be fun. We have supported him in many ways, not just cash but we've done everything possible to assist him in entry fees and getting the car on the road. 
cars such as this cost a fortune and we have not given him the car. But our target for Ian is to do as well as possible, hopefully to repeat his 1994 WRC performance and win the rally. VAR controversy reigned on Wolves once again as Gary O'Neill's side fell to defeat against Fulham following a 5-0 thriller at Criven Cottage. Wolves had to fight back twice after falling behind. The first saw Matthias Kuna head off the ball into the net at the far post midway through the first half before he Chong Wang dispatched his side's first penalty of this season late on. And Fulham get the lead for a second time early in a half for the last 20 minutes and very much game on at the cottage here's Wang Ooh, Wang fires it in sheer power is enough and it is 2-2 William oh, Robbins is in the clear here and plenty of Fulham players in the middle the ball has the oh full of performance that's for sure but deep into the night here at Craven Cottage, Willian fires in his second penalty and they lead 3-2. In other news tonight, residents of Milimani Estate in Kakamega town have been left homeless and are counting losses. They are in this situation due to the ongoing demolitions which are to pave way for the government's construction of affordable houses. The residents claim that they were not given sufficient time to move while some are claiming they had court orders stopping the exercise. The last two weeks have been a nightmare to the residents of Milimani Estate in Kakamega town following demolitions of their multi-million shilling property. The demolition is meant to create space for the construction of affordable housing units launched by President William Ruto four months ago. 90-year-old Joyce Notharil Nem is one of those affected as her 30-year stay in this serene area has abruptly come to an end after her house was brought down late in the night. I was in deep sleep. In fact, I woke up too late. I had I didn't know. Just slept. Only to hear noise. Bang, bang at the gate when they broke the, the gate. We should handle people like human beings. We have the feelings. It takes time. I built here alone. My husband died in 1992. Joyce says her rights have been infringed on and as she struggles to salvage the little she can, she plans to relocate to her village home but insists she was given the piece of land by the government 30 years ago. They don't know how we came here. In fact, it was President Moy who gave us this place after sorting out all this. President Moy gave us this land. Here, here where I am. We didn't grab it. Someone recently was in the news saying, grab us. We are not grabbers. A few meters from her home is what was businessman Jaswa Tri's palatial home that has since been reduced to a shell by the bulldozers. <laughs> So kidogo tukasikia kwa geti kama kitu kinagonga. So wakati tulitoka tukaona maskari wamejia inje wengi na tinga nawe kawe naendelea kufanya nini kubomoa. So tukashangani nini likuwe mefanyika. Wakati walianzia pa kwa geti, alafu wakataremuka kwa nyumba ya mauwa hapo, alafu wakaenda swimming pool. Alafu wakaenda kwa nyumba kubwa upande ya nyuma, wakaigonga. Vilo waligonga, tena wakapinduka wakarudi sasa. Kurudi sasa andu waliingia kwa nyumba yetu kabisa. Adjacent to the home of these two houses initially occupied by two judges. The inside speaking to the possibility that they were caught unawares by the demolitions as their valuables are intact. Other residents wary of talking on camera but are in a haste to salvage their items lest they go down the drain. Such billboards have been erected here warning residents that it is government land. Only government establishments like the Kenya Agricultural and Livestock Research Organization, Kalro, the Kakamega State Lodge, and the official residences of the Kakamega County Commissioner and the Western Region Coordinator will be spared. Kuna vile 
hizo nyumba zinakuja kujengwa ndio lakini inatakana kwamba sisi pia tuheshimu na tujue kwamba ile structures zenye zinakuja zikuwe na umuhimu kuonyesha kwamba kakameka count itachukua ile city status yenye inahitajika tunataka kuomba serikali ijukue hatua ambayo si hatua ya kumuumiza mwananchi watu kulala nje kwa bariti na wamechenga wameweka resources zao kwa nyumba ambazo wamejenga pale mlimani sisi kama wananchi wakakameka tumekata more than 100 families have been affected as the government targets more than 50000 acres to make the project a success ala nochanda ktn news the micro retail sector employs more than 9 million Kenyans according to the micro and small enterprises authority msea the sector says the sector has recorded a considerable growth since 2021 with 67% of the micro enterprises being women led and the sector received a major boost from Zurich Lair Foundation for Ethics in Globalization and Technosar. <laughs> Uh, National Duca Owners Umbrella Organization, the most recognition. Our vision is to make sure that the Mamamutuans are formalized, they are digitized, and they are efficient. And how do we do that? As an organization, we have been building the capacity of the micro retailers. We have a curriculum and a methodology that has been tried, tested, and proven for the last seven years. Micro retailers who play a pivotal role in contributing to the success of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. As the key players in the last mile of the value chain, micro retailers, with the support of Technosav and other partners, will not only enhance their own economic prosperity, but will also become integral contributors to, to the prioritized value chains. As we embark on this journey, I encourage each of you to delve into the stories of these micro retailers. Their resilience, innovation, and commitment to their communities form the core driving forces behind the establishment of this association. Today's launch is an opportunity for us to collectively shape a future where every Duca owner not only survives but thrives. It has been a week since Health Cabinet Secretary Susan Nakubicha issued a Gazette notice operationalizing the Social Health Insurance Act 2023. But now, the High Court has slammed the brakes on its implementation until a case challenging its legality is heard. Our reporter, Hosna Mohammed, is looking at that story. On Tuesday, 28th November, the Health Ministry placed an advertisement in a section of local media on commencement of public participation process on the Social Health Insurance Act 2023. But this comes on the back of Justice Chacha Muita's ruling that granted orders halting implementation of the very same act. The Social Health Insurance Act 2023 is among the four that were recently assented by the President after being passed by Parliament in 19th October 2023. Under the new law, all Kenyans are required to be registered to the Medical Insurance Scheme to access medical services. However, Justice Chacha's ruling was based on a case filed at the High Court by Joseph Enoch Aura. Aura had argued that it is illegal for the government to deny Kenya's medical services if one was not a member of the social health insurance. Under the scheme, all Kenyans will pay 2.75% of their earnings. Every Kenyan aged 18 years and above will be required to make monthly contributions to the fund that will replace the NHIF. And those who fail to pay their monthly health premiums will be fined an equivalent of 2% of the defaulted amount for the period that contributions remain unpaid. Defaulters could be locked out of government services. But as the back and forth over the social health insurance continues, Kenyans have been speaking about it. This insurance at the end of the government, the government should look at, at all at all causes fight for the people and the people's health. Everybody has a right. You have a right to choose what is good and what is bad. You have a right to choose the insurance you want. Kenya Kwanza, if I, ideally they want this program to succeed, they should also not rush this program. In the initial proposal, contribution to the fund has been based at 300 and capped at 5,000 shillings. However, 
The president's recent comments pointed to the contrary. Health is not something that anybody should miss because of their financial status. The indigents, the people who cannot pay, will be paid for by the government of Kenya. The development came hours after health CA Susan Nakumicha made the staff of the National Health Insurance Fund to discuss the transition. She hinted at possible job losses. I am yet to see a reason of anyone to lose hope. Unless you know very well that there's something that you have done that is yet to be discovered. And within this period it might be discovered. Then you must be careful. But if you know yourself, you're okay, you're doing your job very well. Nobody needs to be worried. I do not see a reason to worry. The Social Health Authority is expected to replace the National Health Insurance Fund once the Social Health Insurance Act 2023 comes into force. Husna Mohammed, KT News, Nairobi. The Hackout in Eldred has sentenced self-confessed serial killer Mustafa Eid to 45 years in jail for the heinous murder of college student Emma Wanyota four years ago. Early this month, Justice Ruben Nyakundi found that Eid, who claimed to be a boyfriend to the slain college student, guilty of her murder. During the sentencing, Justice Ruben Nyakundi said that the court would have awarded the convict a death penalty if it was allowed by law. Justice Nyakundi pointed out that the murder of 21-year-old student was motivated by hatred and it was premeditated. But because of other considerations constitutionally that usually they are as Kenya, uh, Kenya execute death penalties, it does exist in the statute, but in terms of execution, there is less, uh, less action by the... By the, by the by the president, the executive, to then make orders of the execution of death penalties. And for that reason, then I don't want to give a death penalty in vain. You know, so for that matter, taking the anyous manner in which this crime was committed, I sentence you for five, uh, for five years in custodial sentence. While delivering his judgment early this month, Justice Nyakundi noted that the prosecution had proved its case beyond reasonable doubt linking it to September 30th, 2019 murder. The way the victim was slaughtered, you had no regard to the right to life given by the Constitution Article 26. That demonstrates that really this was a killing which was not justified, a killing where there was no excuse, a killing which was planned, premeditated, the way the, 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 the body parts of this particular victim was found in Eden and the way the, the word is remembered, the severance of the bodies of the victim can only be that this, uh, this is a murder. Sharon Wanyota, a twin sister of the late Wanyota, said that a single mother had endured untold psychological torture since she lost one of her last born daughters. <laughs> Nina uchungu, uchungu, uchungu sana. Mustafa kiwachiliwa tarudi kutuwa na uwa na tutishia. Mimi na shukuru tui serekali. Kwa vile imefanya araka na haki imetendeka mwisho. Miaka rubaina tano sidhani kama Mustafa tarudi kama angali hai. Na shukuru kwa mungu. Hai yote ya mefanyika lakini asiwai toka ndani hata siku moja. Ma was my twin sister. At least I'm happy justice has been served. For now, I would like to thank the High Court. Naningesema, wherever a master is, let her just rest in peace. I thank God. Four years has not been easy. Tumekua na a lot of challenges. Lakini tunashukuru tu mungu, justice imekua served. Indo siku nilikuwa ni meingoja sanata na jua maali ya masa ya kwa she's just happy. Mustafa has been detained at Eldoret GK Remand Prison since his arrest after the court declined to grant him bail on grounds that he was a flight risk. Elvis Kosgei, KT News, Watson Gishu County. Indeed, the wheels of justice grind slowly, but surely justice is served. The International Trade Union Confederation in Africa has had their fifth Congress in Nairobi today. Speaking at the meeting, 
President William Ruto reported that in the last eight months, 120,000 jobs have been created under the affordable housing program. He also reiterated the deliberate plan to give visa-free access to visitors from any African country as one way of promoting integration and trade. Thus be stepping up our work to promote fair labor migration that benefits migrant workers as well as countries of origin as well as countries of destination. Dear colleagues, the achievement of social justice calls for the urgent realization of freedom of association and collective bargaining. Most of people say, why, uh, why, why is no court talking about the cost of living? Why court is not talking about issues related to taxation and so on? Why court is quiet when people are doing this? But I can assure you, and he's here the president is. I have time and again engaged the president. He has given us his side of his story and we have given him our side of story and we have given ourselves time bound that we expect things to change. I know the court have said we should go and readjust the law to make it aligned appropriately. That we are going to do so that the 120,000 people can become 200,000 and can become 500,000.